Hello everyone, it is April from Getting Hooka With It. Today I'm here to do a big gigantic book haul. Are we surprised? Probably not. Let's get into it. Oh my goodness, so I went shopping and I was unbelievably spoiled by you guys by publishers so I am going to dive right in to the book haul. I am fresh back from chapters or indigo. It's called indigo slash chapters here in Canada and I bought a book that I've had my eyes on for a very long time and that book is oh I have to take out the receipt. That is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernardine Evaristo. I have been only hearing amazing things. This was one of Simon's favorites. I think he read it last year and loved it. Lauren and the Books have loved, has loved um, this book as well as Jen Campbell and just the way that everyone is talking about their writing style. I'm just so eager to read this author. This I believe follows either 10 or 12 black women living in Britain and it's each of their different experiences living there. Um, I don't know much more about it than that. People say it can be like a short story collection that are interwoven stories. I think this is meant to be a little reminiscent of homegoing in that way where you meet new characters but they all interlink. I'm so excited to read this. I finally have my hands on it and it's going to happen. I have so many high hopes for this book. Will it be a five star first line? Ooh. Here we go. Ama. Ama is walking along the promenade of the waterway that bisects her city. A few early morning barges cruise by, cruise slowly by. To her left is the nautical themed footbridge with its deck like walkway and sailing mast pylons. To her right is the bend in the river as it, it heads past Waterloo Bridge towards the Dome of St. Paul's. She feels the sun begin to rise, the air still breezy before the city. You know what? There is no first line because there is no punctuation in this book, which I did not know about. That's exciting. I, it can't be five star first line because there's no punctuation, but I'm so curious just because I, I don't know if I've read a book where there hasn't been any punctuation. Oh man, future me. Um, one day, it took me one day since filming this video uh, and getting more from Indigo. So I thought I'd share what I got from Indigo with you. Um, so I got Girl, Woman, Other, as you just saw, which is very exciting. But then I did a little online shopping. Um, first is a non-book item that I will just briefly mention. It's a silk sleeping mask and it's pink and it's gorgeous. Like I cannot wait to throw this on my face and have a lovely, lovely snooze. Hooray. I actually also just ordered some satin pillowcases. I can't afford silk pillowcases because they're insanely expensive. Never mind that, this is a book haul. The other book that I just bought is Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. When I was at Chapters, I wanted to get this, but it was full price. And I don't mind paying full price, but when I know I can go online and it's like, it was $35 versus $20. I mean, I'm gonna just go online and order it. So this is in, and I think I'm gonna dive into this one really, really soon. Um, Such a Fun Age is about um, a woman, I think she's quite young. She's in her 20s, I think. And she um, is nannying for a white couple. She's a black 
woman nannying for a white couple. And one night, I don't know if it's Saturday night or Friday night, um, this couple calls her out of the blue, like it's the evening. She's out with her friends and they say, can you please come and bring our child to the grocery store? Uh, and so she agrees to do it. When she's at the grocery store, I think a security guard thinks that she is uh, kidnapping this white child and it's their altercation. Now the mother um, is very much, I believe, on her side, but doesn't fully understand what white privilege is and what racism can look like. And I think she is grappling with it as well. I have just heard such good things about this and I've really, really wanted to read it. So I decided to pick this up as well from chapters. I also forgot that I need to read you the first line from such a fun age. So let's do that right now. That night when Mrs. Chamberlain called, Amira could only piece together the words, take Briar somewhere and pay you double. It's not a five star first line, but I'm so excited to read this book. Okay, back to the regularly scheduled video. That, and then I went to another Valley Village recently and picked up a bunch of books there as well. I picked up The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. I watched the movie of The Remains of the Day many moons ago. I think it was in the 90s, filmed, filmed in the 90s. I could be mistaken about that. But this follows a butler and also a maid in 1956 and it is about um, their friendship together I believe and their experience in service. I think this is a slow a slow burn a slow moving plot but it's very much a character driven book so I'm very happy to have this. Um, I really loved Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro which I know is totally different vibes but uh, I'm really excited that I have this on my shelves. Is it going to be a five star first line? Let us find out. It seems increasingly likely that I really will undertake the expedition that has been preoccupying my imagination now for some days. That, that sounds really interesting when you know that this is about a, a butler, I imagine their lives would be kind of mundane and very similar day in and day out. And so the idea of this adventure, I think that's a five star first line, considering the storyline. I also bought 419. This won the Giller Prize a few years ago now, and I, I always see it on the shelves of Valley Villages, but I've never picked it up. And it does sound interesting. This follows, uh, again, multiple characters. One of the characters is a woman um, walking out into a dust storm in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and then we also follow a woman named Laura Curtis. Her father was murdered and she is trying to track down the killer and all of these storylines interweave. And it's meant to be really, really good. Will it be a five star first line? Would you die for your child? Yeah, that's, that's five stars. Yes. Would you die for your child? Immediately sucked in. Also, I hope the child doesn't die. I also got another John Mars book. This is the one. This is the one that everyone raves about when it comes to John Mars. This book is a bit of sci-fi and a bit of thriller and it's about an online dating site that can match you with your perfect mate, your perfect soulmate. Uh, I think they match you through DNA. People are leaving their significant others and and applying for this so that they can find their true love. Um, I think one of the characters that we follow um, discovers that her soulmate is a killer, like a serial killer or something along those lines. It sounds like a lot of fun. Will it be a five star first line? This is the question. Mandy. Mandy stared at the photograph on her computer screen and held her breath. Definitely not. Anytime there's holding, holding the breath, all of that is just kind of cliche, not a five star first line. 
Well, as Nikki French and the series, Frida Klein series, is coming to a close, I thought that I should, you know, have a backup series for when I finish. My goal is to read a new detective series every year. Um, some of them are long and some of them are short. This one is a long one and this is the Maisie Dobbs series. So this is the first in the series. I'm not saying that this is what I'm going to read next year. I don't know what series I'm gonna pick, but this is a real contender. And this follows Maisie Dobbs and it's in the 1920s. Um, she was a nurse during uh, the Great War. Um, it's um, several years later now and she has decided to open up her own detective agency. It takes place in London. I love the blend of historical fiction and mystery, so I'm very eager. I've heard really, really good things about the Maisie Dobbs series, so I thought I'd pick up the first and see what I think of it, and then maybe that'll be my next series. Who knows? It's time to read the first line. Even if she hadn't been the last person to walk through the turnstile at Warren Street Tube Station, Jack Barker would have noticed the tall, slender woman in the navy blue thigh length jacket with a matching pleated skirt short enough to reveal a well-turned ankle. It's not a five-star first line. Now I'm trying to pick up more middle grade for me and also most importantly for Nora um, and when I found Wish Tree at the Value Village like brand spanking new looks like nobody read this which is a shame for them. Uh, I decided to pick it up. So this follows Red which is an oak tree and this oak tree gives wishes. People will come by and tie little ribbons or cloth on their branches and um, say a wish. And Red's purpose, Red the oak tree's purpose is to make those wishes come true and it follows Red along with the families around her and also the animals that live in and on her and I'm really I think it sounds so lovely and I've heard really good things about Catherine Applegate I've never read anything by her so I think this sounds like a lovely place to start it gives me like the giving tree vibes probably probably only because it's about a tree that's probably the only reason but I loved that as a child so if this has any of those vibes in it I mean, I'm here for it. It's time to read the first line of Wish Tree. It's hard to talk to trees. I like that. I think that's a five star first line. I really liked that. It's hard to talk to trees. I don't know, there's something about it that works for me. And then I picked up There There by Tommy Orange. Uh, one of my goals um, my reading goals is going to be to read more Indigenous authors. I think that's really important to me and this has had so much hype and so much love that when I saw it, I, I grabbed it right away. Um, what this is about is a little confusing. It says that this follows several people, several Indigenous people. Um, it's a multi-generational story. I think um, we're going to follow them all coming together um, for a powwow. Um, one of the uh, characters is a beautiful dancer and he's been um, dancing on YouTube and filming himself um, doing traditional Indian dance. And I think all of them are going to come together at this powwow. I don't really know much about it other than so many people have absolutely loved it. So there is that. Let's read the first line of There, There. There was an Indian head, the head of an Indian, the drawing of the head of a head-dressed, long-haired Indian depicted, drawn by an artist, an unknown artist in 1939 broadcast until the late 1970s to American TVs everywhere after all the shows ran out. Huh. That's, I'm like drawn in by that, but I don't think it's a five star first line, but I am drawn in. Next, we should chat about the two books that you guys sent my way, which I'm so grateful for. The first is The Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse by Charlie McKersey. 
Um, this is a, kind of a picture book. It's absolutely gorgeous. And this was sent to me by my lovely subscriber, Judy. Thank you so much, Judy. It arrived. Judy sent this to me. She ordered it for me like early May and it just arrived very recently. And um, yeah, we've been like chatting back and forth about like where in the world could it be? And it finally arrived and I'm so happy that it's here. I'm intending to read this for um, the Reading Rush as one of my books, I've heard that you bawl your eyes out and I don't know much more about it other than it's a really emotional book. I don't need to know more. It sounds so lovely and I'm, I, I can't believe I have such a gorgeous book on my shelves. So thank you, Judy. Will this have a five star first line? Ooh. You started at the beginning, which is impressive. I, I don't I don't think it is a five star first line, but I do like that it addresses the reader right away, but not five stars. And then Tashima sent me a uh, Silver Sparrow by Tiyari Jones. And this is such a gorgeous book. And I know that the storyline is going to be so interesting. So Tashima wrote, April, this is just a small token of my appreciation to you for being a voice to the black community. I appreciate you from Tashima. Thank you so much. That is so, so kind of you to do that. I, I am really excited about this book, guys. I have An American Marriage on my shelves. And I've got this one. And there's something about Tiari Jones and the storylines that she comes up with that just seem so fascinating. So this one, straight from the get-go, you find out that um, we're following, I think, two sisters. One of them comes out saying, my father was a bigamist. This takes place in the 1980s in Atlanta. And we follow these two sisters in two separate families. One of the families is his public family, and one of the families is his secret family. And I think these two sisters find out about each other, and that has to be an interesting experience. I cannot even imagine what that would be like. How many emotions would come up? I'd have a lot of anger, I imagine, but it's just meant to be absolutely wonderful. I think this just came out in the UK, but it's been around in the US and Canada for a while. Um, that said, I am still very, very eager to read this. And look at this cover. It is stunning. Thank you so much, Tashima, for sending this my way. You did not have to do that. And I'm so glad that you did, but you didn't have to do that. And I, I'm very excited. Let's see if it's a five star first line. My father, James Witherspoon, is a bigamist. Five stars. Yes, it is. It is. Okay, now we're going to get into the books that a publisher sent my way. And um, wow, I was really, really spoiled by Penguin Random House Canada. Um, I am so, so lucky. Um, I know how lucky I am. I have a really lovely, gorgeous stack of books that I cannot wait to get to. Um, the first is Biased. Uncovering the hidden prejudice that shapes what we see, think, and do by Jennifer Eberhardt. I have been making a conscious effort to read more anti-racist literature. Um, and this one I haven't heard a lot of people talk about, but it sounds just fantastic. This is incredibly well researched. Um, Brian Stevenson has loved it. Michelle Alexander, who wrote The New Jim Crow, loved it. Um, this is about unconscious bias and how it, it infiltrates our society. Um, and it specifically focuses on racial bias um, as not being the fault of a few bad apples, but is a present is present at all levels of society. And she really studies this unconscious bi bias 
and forces you in this to realize it and and learn about it and try to see it within yourself I imagine and see it within society and I'm so eager to read this so yeah biased uncovering the hidden prejudice that shapes what we see think and do first line I walked in through a sea of navy blue uniforms that's not that's not five stars sent over Hamnet and Judith by Maggie O'Farrell. This is Maggie O'Farrell's new one. This is the one that everyone has been just gushing about. Simon at Savagery. This is his favorite book so far this year. It is about grief and love and family. So in this book we follow Shakespeare's wife and their family. Um, I think they had two children, Hamnet and Judith, and I believe that Hamnet dies. And his death um, sparks Shakespeare's writing of Hamlet, if I'm not mistaken, but this really follows Shakespeare's wife more than anyone else. It also talks about the plague in here. I am just beyond eager to pick this up. Um, this is coming out July 22nd. 23rd I'm trying to remember I think one of those days yay this has been like this is probably the book that I've been most excited about all year so I'm almost afraid to read the first line of Hamnet and Judith because I want to love this book so much I know I will I don't need to worry stop worrying about April a boy is coming down a flight of stairs. Okay, it's not a five-star first line. That's okay. It still could very much be a five-star read. It's okay. Um, they also sent over Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I've already read this. I really did enjoy this. Riley Sager is like a staple for my summers. I must read a Riley Sager or I haven't had a summer in my mind. And this one is a bit of a ghosty story. We follow a woman whose uh, father has died. Um, he has left her a house that she lived in with her parents um, and she only lived there for 20 days because in those 20 days um, they were haunted and they had to leave. She had no idea that her dad had hung on to the house. She thought it was like well in their past but she starts to learn about the house and knowing that she now is the owner of it, she decides to go to the house and spruce it up for resale. It's kind of what she does for a living is, is flipping houses. And um, she goes there, even though her mother has said, please, please, please do not. And she starts to experience some creepy things. It was a lot of fun. Okay, so let's read the first line of Home Before Dark. I have already read this book. So I'm kind of cheating, but that's fine. Every house has a story to tell and a secret to share. That's very enticing and brings you in, but I don't know whether that's five stars. Next is Conjure Women by Athia Atikora. And I've heard really amazing things about this. This is set before and after the Civil War and we follow I think multiple generations of women who are healers and their stories and I believe that there is uh, a birth of an accursed child that totally shakes up this little town um, and I, I'm so eager to read this I think it sounds absolutely wonderful I believe this is a debut as well and isn't this the most gorgeous cover you have ever seen in your life? Yes. Yes, it is. It's time to read the first line of Conjure Women. The black baby is crying, wormed and bloomed. That's a beautiful first line. I, I don't think it's five star because it doesn't have that like punch to the gut like what is going to happen next, but it's very beautiful. Um, next up is Hood Feminism. I just finished this very recently. I highlighted it. I don't know if you can see that. I know I am horrifying so many of you, but I do like to highlight 
nonfiction books where I want to learn a lot and retain a lot. And this is this is a book that I wanted to learn a lot from. Um, I read White Fragility and that was fine. This was brilliant. I loved Hood Feminism. This is about how the feminist movement can leave black women behind and is not inclusive of the needs of black women um, and marginalized women and it was wonderful. I had no idea how, you know, things like hunger could be a feminist issue. Gun violence could be a feminist issue. There were so many things in here that I just, you know, I think I, I, I think I, I had this idea of what feminism was and it was very much a white feminist perspective. And this book has made me a better feminist. I hope it will continue to make me a better feminist. Um, unbelievable. I so highly recommend. I know this isn't a review, but I got this. I read it pretty much as soon as it came in the door. And it has really made such an impact on me. And I, I so encourage you to read it. So let's read the first line of Hood Feminism. I have already read this book, but we'll read the first line anyway, in case it truly is five stars. My grandmother would not have described herself as a feminist. Not a five star first line. Um, next is another book that I have been so eager to come out. I didn't know whether this book would even exist. I had hoped that it would for many years. It's the sequel to Bird Box. This is Mallory. So we continue with Mallory's story. I don't want to say what happened in Bird Box to Mallory, but um, the gist of that story is that there is something outside. If you see the something, you kill other people, you kill yourself. Um, and so we're living in a world in which people are going blindfolded uh, or boarding themselves up in their houses and not leaving the house. And we follow uh, a rather young mother um, and she has blindfolded herself and her two kids and they're setting out on the river behind her house trying to find a safe place. And it's the continuation of her story. Uh, I need to know what happens to Mallory because at the end of Bird Box I was like, more please. <laughs> and so he must have heard me. I think he heard me and said, yes, sure, no problem, April. I'll just, I'll just get on that. Thank you, Josh. So let's read the first line from Mallory. Mallory stands flat against the brick wall of a classroom. No, it's not, a, it's not five stars. Uh, next is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This is a YA mystery thriller book about a girl whose high school friend is convicted of murder. Um, I think he kills himself though. Um, he is convicted of having uh, killed one of the most popular girls in high school. Um, uh, he was dating this popular girl and then she was murdered. And I think he was accused and convicted of murdering her. And so he actually kills himself. Now, our main character, Pip, just doesn't understand and cannot join the boy that she knew growing up with this image of a murderer. It just doesn't make any sense. So she decides to kind of reopen the case herself. It sounds like a lot of fun. And um, Audrey over at Chapter and Converse has been loving this series. The second one is out in the UK, not out yet here in the US, Canada. Um, but yeah, it sounds wonderful. So let's read the first line of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Pip knew where they lived. No, last book, last but not least, is How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram Kendi. Um, he wrote Stamped from the Beginning, which is another book that I really want to read. I have that one. I'm on hold for the audiobook of Stamped from the Beginning. 
Um, and this book is a straightforward, um, I think, guide to being anti-racist and to learn about racism and the systemic nature of racism. I kind of, I'll be honest, I kind of wish that I had just started with this instead of White Fragility because I know White Fragility has a lot of issues surrounding it. It's written by a white woman um, who, you know, pays a lot um, or charges a lot for um, anti-racism training in many workplaces. And um, there's just a few things about that book that I, I kind of wish I had just gone to this instead. That said, I am really, really eager to read this. I've only heard amazing things about him. He came out with a, a board book called Anti-Racist Baby, which sounds so great. I should probably get that one for Nora. So let's read the first line of how to be an anti-racist and see if it's a five star first line. I despised suits and ties. Not, not a five star first line. In any case, those are all of the books that I have picked up and received lately. I feel very spoiled and very eager to read. Like I really am having the best reading year of my life. And I don't see it getting, like, I don't see it tapering off. I don't think the best has is behind me. I feel like I have so many amazing books to get to. I, I'm just really, really happy. Let me know in the comments below, have you picked up anything recently that you're really excited about? I'd really love to know what that is. Um, or are there any new releases that you've read recently that you've loved? I'd also love to know that. Um, in the description box below, you can check me out on Goodreads, my Amazon wishlist, my Instagram, um, also my Patreon. Um, I hope you guys are doing really, really well and that I will talk with you soon. Bye guys!